Hi, I'm Mr. Kawila, and welcome to the Pope of Pop Culture. If you're on your phone, I hope you're taking pictures of your celebrities, your influencers, and pictures of me, okay? Chomi, we are evaging up. And I... Barimini bitches and Dine Musa Kawura and welcome to the Pope of Pop Culture. A couple of days back, me and my friends we was talking and not me also obviously getting shocked that Mohale is borderline homeless. Oh my god. You remember that obviously he tried to scam Somiza with that fake ass marriage and wedding and whatnot. And then it turns out obviously Somiza was gonna get the best lawyers bitch and Mam Kiz's lawyers and all of them expensive lawyers bitch. They were like bitch you ain't getting nothing and now so I'm hearing that he's probably living and he's actually living downtown Joburg and whatever in some rental shady ass apartment broke as fuck bitch and then oh and then one of my friends seen him he was you know by fnb stadium and one not they would seen him he was walking there looking broke as fuck hungry as fuck bitch he was going to buy in and togo and one of he was crossing the road bitch and then they seen him Oh my God, it is such a disaster. But also you're gonna know that obviously he being a whore, he's, you know, he's tried to scam some easy and whatnot. And now as of recent, cause obviously once a whore, always a whore bitch. Now he is uh, dating politicians. I'm hearing obviously, you know, he's trying to, make a living and whatnot. But one thing that uh, Sumiz obviously gave him was the greatest gift of his life, him getting known to us and him getting his accounts verified and whatnot. But bitch never had talent. So now that's the actual matter because now he's had the spotlight, he's had so much attention over the past two years or ever since he got it on with some easy and whatnot but still there is nothing that has happened in terms of what the fuck he's doing and whatever in terms of being a creative and whatever but anyway you know that he has the radio show is the opulence radio station that nobody listens to because I'm always like, what the fuck? What is opulence FM? Who the fuck is listening to that? Because me and my friends don't fuck with unknown radio stations, bitch. So anyway, uh, it's been a minute since I've spoken about the sad divorce because in my head, I'm always like, how the fuck are you getting divorced when you never got married initially? Because obviously you need to sign, you need to, you know, there's a lot of things that will institute a legal marriage. So now it is what it is. He's back in them streets, bitch. I'm sure he's going to be partying at the regular spaces for them gays and we're not trying to scoop up like a rich man or something to support him. But it's just real sad, isn't it? Hmm. And you know what? And I think we should like invite him to come over here. You know, he can come as a colleague of Mapaniki or do something. He can do something useful at the show then to just be useless and and we're not but anyway if we're being honest i'm like literally going to tell you that i remember when um one of my friends at the time when they were going to get married you know all the gays were excited so me is getting married to this unknown low class as whole and whatnot and then i remember my friend wanted us to go to the wedding and whatnot and i was like you know what i'm not going because they're going to get a divorce anyway and i don't got time i'm just too busy to be attending nonsense and shit and manja i'm like happy amanga army because now umshad opeli there was never even a marriage and whatever to start with this whole thing is just shady right we can agree on that we don't give shit about this story All we can do is wish Mohale well, obviously, as he partakes of the next journey of his life and whatnot. But shame, Mohale, you played yourself, bitch. How do you want to be a whore then be dumb? Like, how the fuck does that happen? Because I also thought instead of having that extravagant wedding and whatever, they should have just gone to the home affairs and signed for 140. It's 140 rand, bitch. You would have been sorted for life. Make sure that Somiza, because he was highly in love with you, that he's, you get married in a community of property. That's what a smart bitch would do. You don't just go there and be posing for pictures and whatever at the show, Max. And I remember, obviously, we seen the wedding when he was like faking a cry. He was ugly as fuck at the time, faking that cry. I could never just... I could never get rid of that image in my head, bitch. Because I'm like, bitch, what were you doing? So now you don't have a marriage. You just had a huge show off. And so means it's like, bitch, you ain't getting shit from me. But obviously also, 
Uh, so Mrs. mom died, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mrs. was the only child. And so Mrs. got all of that coin from her dead mom and shit. And now you can't even get a coin of that because she was foolish. You let your friends mislead you and whatsoever. And then you left that man. Now look at you now struggling in the Joburg, being homeless and shit. But anyway, we're going to move on. Good luck to you, baby. I don't know, you deserve everything that went down, fuck you. But anyway, I want us to move on. I want us to talk about um, Mass Country. Obviously that's AKA's album and everybody is loving it. And when I, but I know that me and my friends don't give a fuck about it, bitch. But we've seen that uh, obviously they erected uh, we seen that they erected a billboard in New York Times Square, bitch, celebrating this mass country. You know, it is what it is. Congratulations, AKA. I don't know what to say about this man. Hmm. But all I know is you did push that bitch of that floor, bitch, and look now what happened. Now you're dead. And then what are we supposed to do now? Hmm. Anyway, we're going to move on. Obviously, we know that uh, I did visit that Funky S podcast and whatever. And then later, you know, after we premiered, uh, or after they premiered, rather, the episode, we seen where then I was contacted by some lawyer's bitch, and they trying to get me. I'm like, bitch, leave me alone, bitch. I am poor. I don't got nothing to do with this. I didn't say all that stuff that that bitch was saying. I was just there listening, right? So anyway, Queen Loli was sent uh, a cease and desist situation by Mayan, obviously, and the wives and whatever. The first thing they said on the letter, obviously, they spoke about their husband, that bitch you lied saying that uh, you fucked her husband, bitch, and then now they want her to retract and apologize and whatnot. Obviously, they're also saying that she defamed uh, who is this, Mpumelelo Sbindi, or whatever his name is these days. So now, it's, it's going to be a whole mess. But I also know that in South Africa, the only thing that they ever give you is a cease and desist letter or whatever. But except you are a friend, you know, the original Bonang bitch. She won't play. She's going to serve you. Ask that boys from that funky unknown podcast bitch. You know that, that boy that's always talking nothing and he's not smart and shit. But then I know that you got sued for real. But we ain't getting sued, bitch, because allegedly, bitch. Anyway, I want us to move on. I want us to talk about, like, Kongo being back with Patel and whatnot. You know why this relationship is now highly publicized? Like, Kongo is everywhere with President Jacob Zuma, bitch. Gege Kegisa Zuma, bitch. I'm just wondering how the old wives are feeling about this. That unknown bitch is sitting in them fucking gandla while like, Kongo is everywhere walking with this man and showing off her man and whatnot. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen them, obviously, they were at an event and whatnot. I think like, Kongo was like an MCU situation and then uh, Kete Hlegisa was there as well. I, I, I don't know. I don't give a shit. But also I know that obviously like, Kongo loves uh, this man very much. Uh, that's very clear. But I'm also wondering in my head, I'm like, does Daddy Dick work? Because He's, he's like what, he's a hundred years old and like Kong is like in her late twenties and I'm just like feeling very sad for she. Hmm. But anyway, uh, good luck to them. Obviously, you know that she's no longer part of the Real Housewives of Durban. She left that franchise to focus on her marriage and whatever and babysitting that old ass man. Shame. You know they have a child together by the way, so... It is what it is, and good luck to La Congo. If, if there's a bitch that is mad, it had been she, obviously. She went and begged a whole president. Meanwhile, the Bokotobi Janishim, the only thing she could do was, you know, steal her friend's man, the president of Ghana, and shit. And, you know, and then the president of Ghana, so I had, you know, from our friends that the president of Ghana just gave it the man. She was like, you know what, bitch, get your money and your botched up face and leave me alone. And she was giving like a one million. And then, um, you know, our friends are also saying that obviously she had to smuggle that money in, bitch. So it, it's a lot going on, but we're going to move on and good luck to La Congo and, and the former president. One of the most exciting news that also I, I came across uh, over the past week was to somebody to making her way into Prada Fashion Week, bitch. You know, she had like the front row set and whatnot. But then something just keeps bothering me with to somebody's fashion. You know that, you know, in the American now it is 
winter and shit. And she was not even dressed. Everybody was dressed like warm and dressed like for winter, like winter clothing, winter collection and whatsoever. Not that bitch. She just showed up in that silk situation. It was cute. It wasn't groundbreaking. But if you take a closer look at the pictures, you're going to see that Mamfage Udai, you know, that die that you get at the Legends Baba bitch. She had hairs on. And I'm just like, okay, like, you know what? The Americans, whoever is styling her, they need to do better. And one thing about this bitch, she would never get her right wigs. I'm a wigs like Aya Khabisa. It's always a mismatch. I like her, you know, I always prefer her with the short hair and shit. But when it comes to the wigs, bitch, let me get me a drink. This bitch stressing me. Obviously, we love her. I just want them to do better. Her fashion, she's trying. But, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. One of the people that we've seen also go to this high class fashion shows and whatever was Tyler. I don't know if you guys know who Tyler is. I don't give a shit about her, but you know, we know she's South African. And then now she went to Balenciaga Fashion Week and whatever. And then she was with uh, Kim Kardashian and whatnot, of which I'm still feeling a ways when it comes to Balenciaga. But then, you know, I suppose we're just going to be happy for her that you got a picture with uh, Kim Kardashian, and now obviously Balenciaga is working overtime to try and, you know, recover their name and clean their name after that whole scandal with the children and the BDSM badge. Obviously, Kim Kardashian has the, this long standing relationship with Balenciaga, so she's never gonna leave the stable, whether dark or blue. But Taylor, we've seen it, she looked cute in that situation. I think Kim Kardashian had worn. Uh, that the dress and whatever it, it was it was real cute congratulations to her congratulations to Tuso Mbedu we like to so I don't care about this Tyler badge but anyway you and I we're gonna talk in a hot second for now I'm just gonna go get me a drink bye baby <laughs>